Well, hello and welcome to the second tutorial on matrix applications. We're going to be looking at our second objective, which is to prove that three given points are collinear. The first tutorial explored the area of a triangle formula when you're given three ordered pairs. So I'm asking the question, what happens if we find that given three ordered pairs, the area of the triangle that we thought would be there becomes zero? Well, since I've already kind of given away that with the objective, I'll just go ahead and reveal this. If we find that three ordered pairs don't actually create an area for the triangle and that it's zero, that must mean that those three ordered pairs are lying on the same line and that they are collinear. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. Since they're lying on the same line, they would not actually make a triangle. So therefore, the area of the non-triangle is zero. So we can ask this in two different ways. The, the uh, example that I chose is to prove that the following points are collinear. Prove that these three points are collinear. What's implied in this statement is that they are going to be collinear. The other way I could ask this is to say, decide if the following points are collinear or not. So therefore, you wouldn't know if they're collinear, and you'd have to have your math back you up. So this time, I know that they will be collinear. I know that when I use my area formula, I'm going to get 0. So let's practice this again. Area is going to be area is going to be plus or minus, and then I set up my 3 by 3 determinant. I'm going to choose to put the ordered pairs exactly how they're given in the problem. Again, so 1, 2, and then 7, 6, and then 4, 4. The third column is just going to be filled with 1s, just like our formula says. And there we go. Since I don't see zeros again, unfortunately, I'm going to pick this third column again. And then I'm going to assign my plus, minus, pluses. So plus, minus, and then plus, minus, plus. Same as last time. So I've got a positive 1 scalar, and then a negative 1 scalar, and then a positive 1 scalar. So let's go ahead and do that. Don't forget the plus or, one, plus or minus a half. So my first scalar is 1. And when I block out that row and block out that column, I've got 7, 6, 4, 4. 7, 6, 4, 4. My next scalar is going to be the opposite of this. That's what that negative sign does. So the opposite of 1. And then its 2 by 2 determinant. Block out the row and column. I've got 1, 2, 4, 4. 1, 2, 4, 4. Continuing down that column, I've got plus 1 as my last scalar. And that 2 by 2 determinant, if I block out that row and that column, will be 1, 2, 7, 6. 1, 2, 7, 6. So that's the expansion by minors. Now I just need to crunch all these numbers together. I got the plus or minus a half. And let's go ahead and do some fission here. 7 times 4 is 28. Minus 4 times 6 is 24. Minus, again, watch out for that minus. I'm going to be subtracting a quantity, so I'm going to use my parentheses. 1 times 4 is 4. Minus 2 times 4 is 8. And then plus, again, I don't need parentheses here, but I just already wrote them, so there you go. 1 times 6 is 6, minus 2 times 7 is 14. Now, again, I know that this is ultimately going to turn into 0, but let's make sure that our math is actually working correctly so that we can prove this. So let's, do, let's combine these um, products. 28 minus 24, of course, is 4, minus 4 minus 8 is negative 4 plus 6 minus 14 is negative 8. Okay, so let's change color here. Plus or minus a half times, we've got 4 minus negative 4, well that just turns into 4 plus 4, which is 8, and there's my negative 8, and there we go. So this ultimately is plus or minus a half times 0, which is equal to 0. I'm going to put a little check mark. We have proven that these points are collinear. These points are collinear. That's the second application of matrices that we're studying. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.